Back on Get Up with a wake-up call in Memphis. John Morant, a huge night. Pete Pranica, take it away. Bally Sports Southeast, here's the calls. Morant blows by Primo. Attack! Oh! Adams going long, Morant! Oh, he hit it! He hit it! He hit it! John Morant gets 70! I mean, just an unbelievable pair of plays that he makes last night. On the night that he scores 52 points, Morant does uh, the first ever Memphis Grizzly to score 50 in a game. The great Jay Williams is here from ESPN Radio. Oh, we've gotten into a debate this morning. Okay. Which of those two is the more spectacular play by Morant? The dunk on Jakob Pertl or the miracle shot with .4 seconds left in the half? I would probably go with the miracle shot. Yeah. Uh, just for the fact that, I mean, look, I, I know John Morant, super athletic, banging over a seven-footer. It's obviously a high level of difficulty as it relates to degrees, but just, I'll say this, Green, I've never, I've never seen a basketball player with the body control that John Morant has to catch the ball out of the air like a wide receiver to torque his body to then find the rim behind the damn backboard to make this shot nothing but net is spectacular. You've made the day of one Bartholomew Scott. Get in here, Bart. I would have pulled an oblique trying to do that one. <laughs> you have been, he has been arguing all morning long That's with Chris Canty that this is the more difficult play. Go ahead, Bart, give me We have seconds. never seen anybody catch the ball with .4 when you're not supposed to be able to get a shot off under uh, .7 and be able to make it. It takes a more it may, takes more skill to throw that up there. Back in my day, Jay Weezy day, he could have made that dunk. No, no, I could not. <laughs> I don't Almost know about that. I could not. Look, you were in your day like a spectacular smaller point guard and all that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. So as you watch what John Morant is doing, and he plays his way this week between the game he had on Saturday night and this one, he plays his way into the thick of the MVP race. Yes. Like, how do you describe what he's doing to this league right now? Well, number one, I think he's slightly ahead, in my opinion, of Joel Embiid and Jokic for the MVP right now. They have the third best record mm. in the entire NBA. Mm -hmm. That's actually second best record since the All-Star break. And yeah. if you're asking me how to define his, his game, Greeny, it's almost like a Russell Westbrook-type athletic ability, but you like wine, right? It's like when you open a bottle of wine, when you first have it, you're like, it just kind of shoots out, right? You know it's really good wine, right. but it shoots out. You got to let it breathe. He's more of the wine that you let athletic ability in the decanter. It has more of an R&B vibe to it. Oh. It's smoothed out. There's a Michael Jordan-esque athletic ability to it mixed with the AI. He is breathe. 2022 version of Allen Iverson. Now, That's I, who he is. I, I see Derrick Rose, the MVP Derrick Rose, you know, because of the athleticism, but also the ability to shoot the ball. Russell has never been able to shoot the ball like Josh. That's the shoot. comparison a lot of people are making. And Rose, Rose won his his MVP in his third season, and this is John Morant's third but season. But why I say it's like the R&B version of it, it because Derrick Rose and Russell Westbrook, they had that herky-jerky, out-of-the-can pop bounce, right? Yeah. This is more, it's discreet, but it's not. Yeah. It's, he's like a Skywalker in a way, like Michael Jordan. He's spectacular. All right, Bart, go find Chris Canty and yell at yes! him. We'll have more on that as we go. yelling. I want to ask you about the, about another circumstance, and that is the net. Yesterday, here in New York City, the mayor mm -hmm. of New York was on CNBC. By now, you're well aware of yep. this, saying that despite the fact that the vaccine mandates are being lifted, that Kyrie Irving will not, at least as things currently stand, be eligible to play home games. Now, we don't know if that will change or not. But I guess I would ask you, with all of the changes that have been made in the Eastern Conference, the huge trades and everything else, does it depend on that? Without Kyrie Irving, can the Nets win the Eastern Conference? Well, with just him playing road games, yes, yes I, I still think they have a legit chance to. Obviously, we expect Kevin Durant to come back in MVP-like form. Mm -hmm. They'll have to. But I, I just want people to think about this puts so much pressure on Ben Simmons. So thinking about where Ben Simmons came from to now all of a sudden he's getting ready, but he's having lower back issues. Steve Nash is going through conditioning. But you, you don't have that gifted third scorer anymore. So it requires Ben Simmons to be ready to go and championship caliber ready to go for the Nets in order for them to do it. But yes, they still have a legit chance. Man. In case it's not clear or in case it's not fresh in people's minds anymore, in the Eastern Conference Finals last year in a series against Atlanta, or I guess it was the semifinals, excuse me, Ben Simmons attempted a total of three shots in seven games. So that there is no reason to think that he becomes an offensive option of any sort for them, right? I mean, I have different expectations for Ben. 
uh, considering the situation he came from and how I've heard people talk about it close to the He took no shots in the final four games of that series. Games four, five, six, and seven, he took zero shots. I want you to think who the Nets have surrounded him with. Where is Patty Mills from? Australia. Yeah. Where does Kyrie Irving have ties to? Australia. There, there's a lot of the kind of foundation level that they're putting around Ben Simmons and hopings that he can actually become a little bit more aggressive offensively. Obviously, you need to shoot the ball, but right. I'm just saying layups at, at the rim, that's not really shooting the ball. That's well, just being aggressive. They may add one more player to all of this because a player became available the yesterday, and that will be Get Your Eyes Checked, which is brought to you by America's Best Contacts and Eyeglasses. This one comes from the struggling Lakers, and this pass, DeAndre Jordan threw <laughs> On Sunday uh, proved to be his last. Uh, they released him, and, and it appears he's going to wind up with the Nets. But but how, uh, Jay? What? Is he going to be at the Nets or the 76ers? Oh, is, is it 76ers? Philly? He's going to. I heard, I heard Phil, yeah, I heard okay, Phil fair Delphi. enough. My my bad there. Either way, the pass. Yeah, I don't I don't know what the hell this is. I I, I can't I can't call that. Um, look, I love DeAndre Jordan. I still think he brings a little bit of a pop defensively here and there. Uh, but I. Look, DeAndre Jordan's going to come and give you minutes, mm -hmm. right, here and there. He's not going to be a main stable point of your defense or your offense. Okay, yeah. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.